Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can study your word together. Amen. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit that he will abide with us. For you said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. We ask now for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Yes. Be with us as we study your word together and bless our listening audience. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's um, go back again to uh, the chapter that we left, the last program, please. Hmm. Chapter 12. Okay. And uh, because we mentioned briefly about this remnant, but there are a few things that I would like to bring. Uh, well, before that, in verse uh, 13, uh, well, 14 and 15, of Revelation uh, 12, even though uh, we discuss this time, uh, the, the, the 1250, 200, 1260 years, uh, you can read, please, uh, my brother Patrick, uh, verse 14 and 15, could, Revelation. Could I bring Two. out a, a little uh, uh, important point on Satan being cast out of heaven and then... Yes, yes, go ahead. Um, go ahead. In verse 9, Satan is cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. That was the result of the battle between Michael and his angels, and which is Christ and his angels, mm -hmm. and Satan and his angels before this world was created. Satan mm -hmm. was cast out. Mm -hmm. But then in verse 10 it says, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, uh -huh. which accused them before our God day and night. And so it, and salvation came when Christ was crucified on the cross. Uh -huh. And at that time, Satan's character was revealed not only to those on earth, but to the entire universe. Uh -huh. And in the angelic mind, Satan was now cast down. He had no influence at all. He had no m more access to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to bring that out that uh, Jesus himself said, I saw light, saw Satan himself like mm -hmm. lightning cast mm -hmm. down from heaven. And, and of course, the plan of salvation was established right, you know, uh, way even before Christ, uh, uh, God created this earth, mm -hmm. the plan of salvation, because nothing takes by surprise to God. He knows everything. He knows the future. In Revelation, it's called the everlasting gospel. That's right. I'm saying. And the people who die in the faith, in the Old Testament, they have, they also are going to be saved. So I don't want people to think that we are saying that salvation started at the cross. Right. Salvation was ratified, yeah. if I can say, with the death of Christ yeah. and the cross. Revelation 13, he says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship with things are whose names are not found written in the Lamb's, in the book of the life of the Lamb, slain from okay. the foundation of the world. The okay. word from means before right. the foundation of the world, meaning this is okay. a plan that was laid way back in eternity. Right, amen. amen. And praise God for that. Now, that we have seen the consequence of sin and the result of all these transgressions and how the enemy, then Satan, using, you know, and the power of nature, using uh, human institutions, using even using religious power, mm. has been and, and kings and and governments. In, in <laughs> Revelation sixteen thirteen, the Bible foretells a time mm. when all the religious powers, mm. but especially all the political powers of the earth mm. as well, will, will be united to make war on God's people. Uh, uh, against the remnant. Against the remnant. Since we're studying the remnant over here. The Bible says in Revelation 16, 13, and 14, 
It says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs mm -hmm. come out the mouth of the dragon and out the mouth of the beast and out the mouth of the false prophet. Mm -hmm. For they are the spirits of devils working mm -hmm. miracles. Mm -hmm. Showing that the devil and his angels will go and do what among these groups? Work mir working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth. Kings mm -hmm. of the earth is the political powers of the earth. Mm -hmm. It says, and the whole world. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's going to grab the whole world on its side. Mm -hmm. It says, kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So a gathering is taking place as we talk. The nations are being gathered to come together for a one world political system. It's and not a, watching a one world religious system being formed mm -hmm. at the same time. It's not a physical gathering, but a gathering in, their, in the mind to have the same mind and thought and view of... Uh, and goal in this world, and, and even physical. The, we, 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 we hear about the physical gathering taking place as well. Yeah, with the mergers yeah. and the not and the issue of unity, but unity not based on doctrine. In truth, in truth not based on truth. Word. Because I mean, I'm sure that you are aware, my brother, about the the, the, the ecumenical movement. I mean, uh, the intentions might be good. Yeah. You know, trying to bring unity in this. So many, as we talk about in the previous program, so many chaos and violence. We need unity, yes, but the unity must be in the truth as it is in Christ. Yes. Yes, the ecumenical movement, to me, it is not everyone gathering together in one organization so much or one place, especially. Mm -hmm. okay. but, in, but everyone seeing the world in the, in the same way and seeing... What God, thinking what God's will is. I wanted to read John 16, Jesus talking about Satan using the church systems, especially Satan uses the church systems. Remember, Jesus said, beware of those that wolves that come in what? Sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. And in John 16, verse 2, he says, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he's doing God's service. Mm. These things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Well, we have seen that throughout the history. But does Jesus talk about a people? Now, he brought a good point. Does Jesus talk about a people that will be professing to be Christian in the end time, but he will not know them because he says that they persecute because they have not known me nor the Father. Mm -hmm. But does Jesus actually confirm a situation like that mm -hmm. at the end of time? Mm -hmm. The Bible says over in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 mm -hmm. and 22, look what the Bible says here, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 22, dealing with this very issue that mm -hmm. Patrick brought up about what Jesus says about these people. Mm -hmm. It says, and, and many, look what it says here in verse 20, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, this is talking about Christians. Mm. shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Mm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful work, all in the name of Jesus. This mm. is to my Christians. Right. Many, look at verse 23, though. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Mm. Then he goes on and says, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Mm. So here is here are, here are a group of Christianity in the last days, not this, this, this could be any of us. Don't you have to just be, we're not just talking about just people outside of what, we, what we're talking about. This can be any Christians mm -hmm. who are choosing to believe that they're going to have salvation in sin. Mm -hmm. God is not saving no man in sin. Matthew mm -hmm. one twenty one says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from, from their, their sins, sins, not in their sins. And if they're mm -hmm. going to be saved in sin, they're not going to be saved for heaven. They're mm -hmm. going to be saved for the lake of fire. For the Bible says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And then you, are, you read, and then you go on, you find out that iniquity is transgression of God's law. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I never knew you, meaning they don't have his character, and he doesn't see his righteousness in them. Well, even in the verse uh, 21st, Jesus is giving, is describing over there the reason why there, there will be those professed Christians will be ex excluded from his kingdom. He said, because, uh, uh, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Huh. What does the will of the father, his yeah. father, got to do? Psalm 40, verse 8 says, okay. I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you, according to Jesus, mm -hmm. those who will not abide to the, the Ten Commandments, according to Jesus, will be 
it doesn't matter how much profession of faith, you know, we can do. He says, you know, the, they will save the part from me. So the will of the Father, and, and so the remnant is going to be a group of people since we have been talking about in previous program and today about the, this special group of people that the, the pure woman has to be a, a church and a, that will abide to the commandments of God. Will f- not, right. in, not because they want to uh, obtain salvation by a strict obedience, but because they will obey the commandments of God because they already have come to that relationship with him and his father. A, a born again person. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in their in their body temples uh-huh. and according to the new covenant experience in Hebrews 10, 15, and 16, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit wants to write God's law mm-hmm. on our hearts and our minds. Mm-hmm. And that's God's true church way back in the Old Testament as well. He just quoted Psalm 40, verse 8. Uh-huh. Where it, he, it, 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 but remember the new covenant. Promise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is the covenant I made with the house of Israel after those days. So I put my laws in their minds and write them in their what? Hearts. Mm-hmm. And I be them a God and they should be their people. Mm-hmm. Now, Second Corinthians 3 3 says, it says, do we do it? says, it says very clearly here that minister not by, not by ink. Second Corinthians 3 3. Uh-huh. Look what it says. How, how this new covenant is doing so we can be sure that we're talking about some people say they're under it, but I, it may not be. For as much as your manifest is declared to be the epistles of Christ, mm-hmm. minister by us, not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, mm-hmm. not in tables of stone, but on the fleshly tables of the heart. And Showing the- that the spirit of God will write the law of God in our hearts and, it, and that under the new covenant we have the character and we have the law. And yeah. then you have to go back to Ezekiel. Yeah, I, I, before you, you mention Ezekiel, <laughs> I just want to uh, uh, give the quote. In Hebrew chapter 8, yeah. verse 10, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you can find the very covenant, thing that the, new that, that, that the new covenant experience. Because the thing is, many people, every time we talk about the obedience of the commandments of God, many people start saying, oh, this group of people are legal, legalist. You know, they try to obtain salvation by the strict obedience of the commandments. But no. That's the experience of the new covenant. Right. And all of us should be seeking to be part of that new that, covenant that's experience. Of Romans, experience. That's the experience of a new believer. In Romans 6, 16, it says, Know ye not to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his right. servants, you whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Yes, Brother Pacho. Pastor Barry read about the Holy Spirit writing, not uh, writing us as a letter to the world, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the heart. Mm-hmm. That goes back to Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. Mm-hmm. A wonderful promise where God says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away what? The stony heart out of mm-hmm. your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, but fleshy mm-hmm. tables, yeah. now that the Holy Spirit, hold it, and I will put my spirit within you, and and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I will bring a question to you uh, right after, before, before, before we, we, we break. Uh, it is the fourth commandment included in there? But watch this. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Brother Patrick, I made a, 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 a place a question to the two of you. Is the fourth commandment, the seventh day Sabbath, that deals with the seventh day Sabbath from creation up to the new creation of the new earth and the new heaven, Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. You know, 
is the fourth commandment part of then of the new covenant experience? Because we hear many good people saying, yes, I agree with that we should obey the commandments of God. But the seventh day Sabbath, why the seventh day Sabbath? Why the, the fourth commandment? Well, according to the, the popular belief is in Christianity is that that fourth commandment was given only to the Jewish people, not to us, the Gentile, the Christians. How can we answer that? Well, Jesus is our example. Okay. And in Luke chapter 4, it says in verse 16, He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And then in verse 18 it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. Now, if I, 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 the argument goes like this many times. Okay, Jesus, because he was a Jew. I'm not a Jew. Well, the problem with that is simply this. When God made the world in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, God made man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God made him male and female, created he them. Adam was not a Jew. Adam was a man. Therefore, the Sabbath was made for man. That's why Jesus said in Mark 2, 27 to 28, okay. the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So therefore, the Jews didn't come until some 500 years later, something like after, if not later, a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have the Sabbath being instituted in eternity. Mm -hmm. Because before man sinned, the earth was immortal. Actually, and over 2,000 years, yeah. everything, the in Jews the, came. Er, in the, <laughs> everything in the earth was made to last. Mm -hmm. So the Sabbath was instituted as the oldest institution of worship long before any religious institution ever came along or denominational organizations. Yes. And so Jesus, who stood there on the Sabbath, said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, deliver those that are in the prison house of sin, etc. And so he was in the spirit, what? On the Lord's day, he, uh, Pastor Barry quoted Mark 2, 28, mm. that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath day. Mm. And so John, in John 1, verse 10, was in the spirit on the Lord's day like Jesus was, which is the Sabbath day. Mm. And that's how we understand the book of Revelation. Mm. If we're not obeying the fourth commandment with all the other commandments, mm. we won't understand the book of Revelation. We have to be in the spirit on each Lord's Day, the seventh day Sabbath, as John was and as Jesus was, to understand the book of Revelation. Revelation 14, verse 7, we're commanded. It says, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So there is a relationship in those verses uh, with the creation. It's, it's almost yeah. the same language, isn't it? Yeah. God, God blessed the seventh day, mm -hmm. sanctified it, and made it holy for all mankind. Mm -hmm. And Amen. so it's still to be kept in our day. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. How can you change something that's perfect? Yeah, and another thing that I want to mention, you were quoting Luke 4, 16. 16 about and 18. Jesus. And 18, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, Luke... Uh, he, he was not a Jew. Right. He was a Gentile. Writing how many years after his... his about, about close to about 40 years uh, after Christ has been, you know, crucified and being resurrected. <laughs> and it should be calling our attention that Luke, even though he was not a Jew, because the argument that I always hear is, well, Jesus was a Jew, Paul was a Jew, you know, and that's why they talk about the Sabbath. Look, 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 but, but Luke was, was not a Jew. Luke was not a Jew, he was, that's right. And, and, and look how, and look how he referred about the seven day Sabbath. Uh, can you read it? 23. The, yeah, please. Tell you have 23, it? 23.56? Yeah, please, please. Look in Luke 23.56. Okay. Luke talks about the Sabbath for a minute. Yeah, yeah. And he says here, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Okay. And the commandment is the fourth commandment. Right. So, so Luke was quoting, what, what was saying this for about 40 years after the crucifixion, and he still was calling the seventh day Sabbath the commandment. And, and of, of course, that was the fourth commandment. Yes, indeed. Um, the experience of the new covenant 
is going to be the experience of the remnant that we're talking about, according to Revelation 12, 17. Now, one of the reasons that I believe Satan has influence into so many good people out there trying to forget about this fourth commandment is because say the dragon who is making war trying you know has made war with the christ true church around throughout the history he knows that jesus said remember that day to keep it holy remember that commandment you know because that was the commandment that he established right there from the beginning as uh, pastor mary just just read the book of genesis chapter 2 chapter 2 1 and 2 so i believe that we are living in the time when god is going is, is trying to restore again the beautiful isaiah says there will be repairers of the breach yeah. in god's law not, not only that, but when we talk about remember, remember means don't forget. Right. But it also mm. is connected to this, you know, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Mm. Showing that God always has a, as aspect of man for man to remember. Remember his what? Creation mm -hmm. and remember his Sabbath. Amen. And these two things that go together. And the Sabbath points to God as creator and mm. redeemer. Mm. And also, it points to him being the creator of the world in six days of creation. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Be, be, before uh, uh, I'll come back to you, I just want to make an offer in this program uh, today. We have put together what we call the 95 Theses regarding the true date of worship. Amen. The seven-day Sabbath. Amen. 95 Theses. Uh, of course, we, we remember those, you know, that... Uh, every Protestant and even Catholics and Evangelicals, whoever, they should be acquainted with the 95 thesis that Martin Luther, you know, nailed at the door of his cathedral, of his church. But, and the reason that we, you know, have put together this 95 thesis, let me see if I, they can get a good picture of the, and we've been putting this like in a pamphlet format. Every, we have put together 95 points how today, still today, the seventh day Sabbath is valid. It's part of the, the, the new covenant experience. It's part of the, the remnant of Revelation 12, 17. And uh, I just want to, you know, make an offer free of charge, free of charge, along with other now, you know, Luther, Martin. when he posted his 95 Thesis, mm -hmm. he meant for it to be discussed. And right. if anyone would like to discuss, we're open to discuss these 95 Thesis. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, I, I, I need to remind myself uh, that to our friends out there, to don't forget to go to our website address, eternalgospel.com. Right there, if you have missed any one of this program, that has been presented by God's grace through 75% of the globe, you can go and click it where it says TV program. And you can go and, of course, you know, watch at your time or listen to our, our national radio programs too. You click to radio program and, and you can be, you know, following all these presentations that, that we, you know, bring to with such, such, with uh, much sacrificing, but in love, uh, it, it's not just program of, of warnings, you know, and, and scaring, trying to scare people. No, I believe that part of the everlasting gospel is to bring the people back to that, to the everlasting gospel, no. <laughs> you know, not to uh, an what I call ecumenical or a social gospel, but the truth as it is in Christ. The gospel saves us from sin, and sin Amen. is when we break one of God's Ten Commandments. And so the Sabbath commandment is still valid, right. it, and it's part of Christ's righteousness that we're right. clothed with. Christ ratified the new covenant when? At the cross. Right. And, and at the cross, the Bible says, 
when you make a testament or a will or a covenant, mm -hmm. after you're, you've died, you cannot change it. You cannot add any, anything either. Right. And so Sunday keeping is a little too late mm -hmm. in, for the new covenant. Well, that would, uh, and I don't know, I, I believe we included over here part of the um, truth that should be making known to everybody out there is that Sunday institution had no, uh, there's no evidence in the Bible at all from Jesus or the apostle that make any change. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was part of the, you know, part of that deception that was going to be introduced in Christianity and it's been placed in the books in history that it was established by the popular church you know the Roman Catholic Church and that's the reason that we have been going to nationwide through national newspaper like this one like a USA Today you know and other newspaper, New York Times, and we've been offering even a thousand dollars for one Bible text. <laughs> you know, just one Bible verse that will prove that the change of the sanctity from the Saturday to Sunday was made by Jesus or one of the apostles just using the Bible. You know, and we, we should clarify too, using the old, you know, the King James. The old King James, because I know there are new versions all over there that have been trying to be introduced very quietly, in which, like a Revelation 1.10, they present it like a Sunday instead of saying the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day, according to the Bible, is the seventh day Sabbath. Amen. All right? Now that I remember that when you said the Sabbath for the Jews, remember that the Gentiles who have been taught by Paul and being in churches that Paul's raised up with Gentiles, Paul taught them the seventh day Sabbath as close to uh, Judaism as were the Jews keeping the Sabbath at one mm. point, but under the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that, that's good. Uh, we just have to close the program for today. Obviously, we want to invite you again to go to eternalgospel.com get in there and you can keep sharing all this program to the, to the people, to your friends and family, and we bring all this program in love to you. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.